I'm excited about this code short video. Give me just a few minutes to address some questions that other people have mentioned about the previous code videos. They were great questions and I want to answer them because I figure if they had them, you probably do too. Okay, here's the first question. Falls body mass index, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes are all high cost health issues that Medicare is focusing on. But what if these priorities change? Basically, if our documentation is focused on these metrics, not normally a goal of OMP interventions besides falls, and Medicare focus shifts, we'll be off target. This was such a good point. And if you think about it, there's also the case of a patient who maybe doesn't have any of these diagnoses. diagnoses. What do you do then? The idea is that these are focus areas for Medicare right now, and they happen to be common diagnoses for our patient populations. But it's true that we shouldn't only look at these diagnoses. It's a good place to start in trying to drive the point home that P&O is part of the healthcare team, and it's not some ancillary service. The key being that we need to remember to put out the word to everyone outside of P&O and remember within our own ranks that our interventions in prosthetics and orthotics make improvements in overall health and quality of life for our patients. They are not like a reach wheelchair rental or a bed rental, a way to make health decline manageable. Here's question two. It's a good one. Just a general comment. You quote Hanger's website about not needing doctor's notes to justify medical necessity in Medicare RAC appeals. At our company, we have had success at the ALJ level with prosthetus notes, but not at any level below the ALJ. We allude to the LCD policy stating physician or prosthetus note. FYI, there are as many or more various other audits and denials that do not look at prosthetus notes. Also, the ALJ is now delayed past the day when most practices will go out of business. So at our company, we maintain that the doctor's soap note must contain some cursory mention of the OMP intervention and diagnosis or treatment target. Higher cost devices have higher doctor note scrutiny and need more support from the doctor. I totally agree with what they're saying here, and it's true that Hanger has said the same thing. They don't feel that they can use the P&O notes until they get to the ALJ level either. And at this point, it's true that the ALJ is about worthless because it's pushed out so far. I have also noticed that with my own clients at Code, what AOPA has stated time and again, that most of the denials currently are based on clerical errors, much more than pro poor prosthetist notes or doctor's notes, although those are still denials we get, I recognize that. But as clerical errors and denials due to poor procedures decrease with improved front office protocols, we should see our overall denials go down. However, as practitioners, learning to write better notes ensures that we won't waste time fighting denials due to poor doctor's notes on cock-up wrist splints, and we can spend our efforts getting good medical documentation on microprocessor knees. The next code video is super cool. We're going to talk about the question, what data does CMS use to make that risk score?